Welcome to Talking Cars. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Mike Quincy. I'm Michael Crossan. So as you can see, we are not at home. We are coming to you from the floor of the New York International Auto Show. As we do every year, it's a nice short jaunt for us from Connecticut to New York. And we've been taking in the show. Usually there's some themes that we see. The first one I see is that there's really something for everyone here, be it the racing enthusiast, the off-roader, the wilderness guy in their pickup truck, oh girl. And, but one thing struck, I know us, as we were walking around the floor, and that is this concept of affordability. Mike, I'll start with you. Mike Q, as opposed to Mike C. <laughs> but yeah. We need nicknames. We yeah. do. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, when, you, when you're walking around and looking at all the manufacturers, what is prominent to, to all of us is uh, a lot of Nissan Sentras yeah. uh, out there. Uh, a lot of uh, Chevy Trax out there. Really but, affordable but, but, Not just out there, but, but right in front, the most prominent, prominant spot place, for sure. on, on, a, on, a, on a show floor that people are going to see right when they walk in. On the stage at Hyundai, Tucson, Santa Cruz. Right. Not the top level, not the Genesis cars. Absolutely, right. yeah. Um, affordability and yeah. practicality seems to be the most important thing going on right now. Yeah. And you wonder, is it, is it manufacturers realizing the average price of a new car keeps going up and up and up? People talk about EVs, how much they cost, and they're, they're, maybe they're sensing a shift that the market is ready Hungry. to start embracing much more affordable. Mm -hmm. If you want a new car, yep. it, the, it has to get cheaper. Yeah. And don't get, get us wrong, there's the fancy cars are here. Absolutely. They are here, but they're not, to your point, Mike, they're not the most prominent. So I wanted to talk to about a couple that are particularly popular, not only with consumer reports, but in, as, with buyers in general. And the first one of that, which is taking tremendous prominence, is the Toyota Camry. Right. Again, up until the pickup trucks took over, best-selling car in the country, mm. super reliable every year, but new Camry coming for 2025. Mm. Mike, see. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's an exciting thing, right? You don't get a new Camry every single year, right. and we're always very hopeful with the Camry because they always do a pretty good job. <laughs> yep. So, you know, it looks cool. Um, can't wait to actually get our hands on the one that we purchased and get to experience it for ourselves. Yeah. I got, I got to shoot a video with Anatoly the Great. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the cool thing is like every model, every trim line is going to be hybrid. Yeah. So there's no more V6. Right. No more standard four cylinder. Uh, all wheel drive I, is going to be available drive, yeah. on, on all the trim lines. Blind spot warning is now standard on all the trim lines. Which Toyota wasn't right and now is yeah um so and, and i actually i think the styling is kind of slick yeah it, it shows that that, that when you, you think at how kind of cool the the prius i mean right. i think the prius looks pretty racy yeah, yeah. that same kind of theme that slick styling is featured i think in in the new camry as well i think i've i saw certainly a lot of slopey sedans yes a lot of slopey sedans um keeping two with the affordable and the slopey sedans was the Kia K4. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, replacing the Forte, right? It's um, bigger, which kind of seems to be the trend, you know, as cars age. I yep. guess if you want to call this the the new Forte, it's really just the replacement. Yeah. So I think two inches wider, two inches longer. Um, there are two motor options. Yeah. 140 something horsepower. You got it. Uh, 147 two liter. liter. Yeah. A 1.6 turbo that's 190 90. horsepower. Yeah, I think. you yeah. got it. Yep. And it looks pretty sharp. I think it's a little more stylized than the Forte was. Yep. Um, but again, yeah, that this sort of swooping back, um, kind of like sort of big fender bulges out back. Yeah. Pretty neat looking car. Yeah. So one too that you know super popular um, among just Consumer Reports members. Again, in general, was the Forester. That was one I I filmed with Dave Abrams, and yeah, an iteration, a little more burly looking, if that's mm -hmm. as they've done with the Impreza and the Crosstrek. You know, that whole wilderness idea same powertrain but again upping the ante in terms of uh safety in terms of infotainment options you know big optional 11.6 inch um tablet like screen but again iterating pedestrian detection bicyclist detection i think we've seen that on a lot of cars powertrains stay in this pretty much the same little tweak in uh, horsepower but every forester buyer again i talk about my 87 year old mother on her seventh forester she'll be ready to be 90 and order her eight because it's not that much of a departure so reliability hopefully will benefit from those small tweaks but of course and again most of these are 2025 models coming and for people maybe traveling from out of town coming to the new york yeah. auto show yeah. 
check out the Subaru uh, display. They always go all out. Yeah. It's very and nice. It, 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 it certainly the wilderness theme, the outdoorsy uh, themes. Yeah. Subaru does that better than anyone. So um, I'm waiting for someone to roll a sleeping bag out right. and just lay on the ground. Over uh, here. Because as as we've seen all over <laughs> time with a lot of auto shows, car makers are cutting back on their right. displays and not as as fancy as they have been. So it's nice to see the Subaru still sticking with, sticking with it. And again, there not everybody's here. To your point, right? There isn't a BMW booth. There isn't a Mercedes booth. So some are opting not to be here. Chevrolet has a huge presence, but we learned the GMC trucks and vehicles that are in the corner are from their regional dealers, Correct. Not General Motors National. Exactly. So, so I think this is expensive and, to do. And, 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 and it's very sad. Looking, really. It's it's tucked away in the corner. They don't have yeah. great colors on any of them. There's nothing yeah. to draw you in. Um, but I think there are some neat vehicles over there. Yeah. Um, I stood in front of the, I think it was a 2500, and it is massive. The grill is wow. huge. The hood height is like around my nose. Um, not going to be great for front over or anything like that. Well, right. And then there's also the EV version of the Silverado. So the Sierra Denali EV is over there, too. So. Yeah. And speaking of EVs, again, the trend, not the forefront, kind of tucked in. It just shows you how the market, they're here, but they're embedded in the floor space of the other vehicles. One in particular though, Mike, that you talked about was Honda's Prologue. That's right. And yeah. it was out front for Honda, basically yeah. right at the corner. Not showy out front. It wasn't. Front. It, it yeah, wasn't right. lit up all that spectacularly. It's kind of in a, a gray color, so it yeah. didn't really stand out. But it's an interesting car. And I did a video on it a little earlier today, but we walked around and we kind of had some comments about it. Um, one of the surprising things to people maybe is that it's a Honda, but it's also General Motors. It's collaboration. It's the, the Ultium platform, like yep. the EV Blazer. And um, so basically battery and motors, which actually might be a good thing. Right. Because that's kind of maybe the best part of the Blazer EV and the Lyric so far from what we've experienced. But I just wonder, for the Honda buyer, what what are they going to feel when they get in this? Because I had both of you sit in. I was like, go sit in. It's weird because there's a H on the airbag for Honda. But it, what does it feel like? Yeah. It, all the, it's, it's all General Motors. All the controls are So, so we, we, motors, we, just, we just wrapped up our testing of the Blazer EV, yeah. and we're looking at the controls like, wait a minute, I've, exactly. I've, I've seen this before. And it's, what struck me about the Prologue is that Honda has been one of the few manufacturers, like Toyota, yeah. that, was, that has not been diving in headfirst to the EV market. Mm -hmm. They've been much more reluctant. Cautious. And, they're, and they're, so they're using an existing GM platform right. and mechanical right. and everything else which lowers their overall right. investment, financial yep. investment in yep. this vehicle. And yep. you know, Honda has rebranded vehicles in the past, mm -hmm. so that's kind of not necessarily new. Right. But on the other hand, it, 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 the, 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 the average consumer has to, has to kind of realize like, no, Honda's not going all in an EV right. if they're getting General Motors basically to build one for them. Right, right. And maybe that's a, a good cost savings there, Dr. Right. up. But is it a risk in terms of other areas of not branding themselves? Yeah, uh, it's the unforeseen cost down the road. The it technician in me nice. wonders about service yeah. because it is a GM platform. Yeah, now does go? Honda have to have a GM scan tool yeah. and things like that? So yeah. um, we're going to get one. So yeah. we're going to find out. And, and, and you brought up they're risking Honda's reputation for reliability. Yeah. Okay, a lot of yeah. new newly designed General Motors products have not done well in Consumer Reports reliability surveys. Right. So Honda has a pretty good reputation for, for yeah. top-notch reliability. So, you know, I, I, you're doing, the, doing the accounting, crunching the numbers, this is way above my pay grade. It's a so, big scale. So I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is a smart move for Honda or, or just they're, they're placating people that say, I want a Honda, but it has to be an EV. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, here's a sort of a General Motors Honda EV, whatever thing. Right. Uh, we'll see how it sells. Right. It'll and be interesting. And like, we're going we'll, we'll to buy one and test it. Absolutely. See how it goes. Yeah. Very interesting. And finally, just in the in the cars we looked more closely at, Mike, was the Volkswagen ID Buzz. Yes. <laughs> That's um, here again. Again. Once or twice. Yes, I think 2016 was the first time yeah. that um, we saw it. Not in an auto show. I think it did be to CES maybe, or that was the first time we saw it. Yeah. Um, I will say, I saw it last year here. Mm -hmm. This particular one looks more complete. It looks more like a ah, factory-ready production vehicle. It's not, though. We did find a couple of things as right. um, Andrew and I kind of made Still our way through the car. So what's interesting year. is it's the three-row, the longer wheelbase, which is what oh. we're going to get here in the States. Okay. And I heard from someone who was in Germany last week, they actually saw a lot of the two-row German models, like, in and around Wolfsburg and out oh, on the road. Okay. So whether they're factory test mules, I don't know, but they saw a few. So we have the long wheelbase here, 
but in poking around, it actually still has the European charge plug on it. Okay. So what's here now today is not actually truly the U.S. model. It might have... Do they have, give any promises of when? There are no promises okay. of any kind yeah. for Volkswagen other than they literally say, stay tuned for more information <laughs> on any time you ask them a question. Okay. Volkswagen promises they're going to keep teasing this. Yes. I mean, talk about like like brand, like love for brand, brand brand loyalty and, and how the the this looks like a classic, you know, summer of love minivan, you know, microvan, microbus, sorry. Um, and and they, they're not producing it, but they still show it. People, people still swoon over it. And like, well, yeah, it might happen. It might not happen. They, there's other swoon worthy. There's a lot of yes. nostalgia. Right. Well. Again, there is something for everyone. A couple of things that I wrote to the race cars that are out mm -hmm. here, be it Travis Pastrana's or some Nismo or whatever. And, and one quote I read, Racing today shapes innovation of tomorrow. I thought that was very interesting, and it almost alludes mm -hmm. to what we do sometimes in a very high-end, very expensive vehicle. I would say luxury of today shapes innovation mm -hmm. of tomorrow, right. and why we test some of these very expensive Absolutely. new technology cars. I, I mean, his, historically, anti-lock brakes debuted on high-end Mercedes-Benz mm -hmm. models. Yeah, and we wouldn't think of even buying a, a new car without ABS because they're all standard everywhere. Right, right. So it starts on the high end yeah. and it trickles, it trickles down, down, just like with the active safety features. Uh, certainly the, most of the electric vehicles are starting out high end. Mm -hmm. And again, they're gonna learn technology trickles down, costs get better. And I like to think we have a role in that particular safety innovation right. where we say, take electronic stability control, where it was high end first and we yep. said, game changer, everybody yep. needs this. And it trickled yep. very, very quickly because it was a game changer. And I think we're seeing a little more of it too. Some of the cars that I spend time with, some things are now standard, not even optional right. in these sort of, I'll call them mid-level or lower end cars. Yeah. Like rear cross traffic or rear pedestrian alert and things like that. And again, you can't argue with those with those safety systems. I love rear cross traffic. I think it's the best of all of them. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you just read, talking about the K4. That had a laundry list of standard safety that just went bang, 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 and hits all the marks that we, you know, give points for or really feel are, are really beneficial for safety. One thing I noticed too, just on the floor here, is automakers doing good, and you were a little cynical. <laughs> but you know, Ford and Honda with micro mobility and wheelchair access to national parks, Toyota has a whole thing on Paralympics mm -hmm. and their support, and you can go try playing basketball from a wheelchair, mm -hmm. not so easy. Um, Hyundai Cancer, Hope on Wheels, support of cancer, Subaru, pet safety, and national park support. So I, it's nice to see. It's, it's nice to see. It, it, I think all most corporations want to have feel good moments, yes. uh, either to make themselves feel better, to say something to their shareholders, yep. or maybe it might even be a write off or whatever. I think it's all good. Yeah. But but you know it, 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 it yeah I do I do look at it just a little bit not cynically but skeptically. Yeah. Would you would it change you? Would it change you if you were on the fence to pick a manufacturer that you thought was doing something good either for the environment, safety. I don't think it would change the car that I purchase because I'm so connected with cars and right. I want the you car know. that I want. Yeah, you know. However, if that car that I want, if they're doing something, yeah. I would feel good about it in the process. Even if, let's say, it was whatever the cause was, I don't have a direct connection to, but I know that $500 is going towards that. Yep. It doesn't hurt, right? I was just thinking, my friend who I take care of, who has MS, who's in a wheelchair, I see those micro mobility and her being able to see, see a national park because the, yeah. the wheelchair has tracks on it. Right. I, no, the, I, the American, I think I would. American Disabilities Act is, yeah. is really important. Yeah. And and you think years ago that we, they didn't have anything like this. Just but to, to yeah. can I if I can j jump on this to answer around. Absolutely. Honest, I love the fact that that Subaru uh, is big on like dog ownership or yeah. pet ownership. Pet, pet safety. We're we're dog people. Oh, yeah, we are. And and for for Subaru, certainly when you're when you're on their website, yeah. they have all these pet accessories. Yep. Whether it's seat covers or harnesses. Yep. Or even like ramps for elderly dogs to they get do. into your car. Yep. I think that's that's totally cool. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't like make me want to this like buy a Subaru over something else just because they're pet right. friendly. But I do like the fact. Listen, talk about smart accounting. You know, the, the pet market, the dog market, yeah. is a billion dollar yes, industry. It yes, so it's it like, well, let's appeal to those. We folks. like our dogs better than we like the people. Well, sure. we can. Yeah. 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 Pretty. Yeah. I think it creates a little bit of community too. So yes. for if we stick with Subaru for a minute, yeah. You know, it's part of that whole Subaru kind of community. Yeah. And let's just a lot of people that buy Subarus are. You know, active. They they bike. They hike. They do all all those kinds of things. So it's again, it's part of that community. Yep. And I think community is important. 
And we talk about that, and like with our community, it's one of the reasons why we do a podcast, right? Exactly. Right. So it's just another way that we can reach out yeah. to to our people, right? Yeah. Or or it's or it's aspirational. It's like people maybe aren't outdoorsy, but they think they might want to be, so right. they get a super, or they they want the image of being outdoorsy, and so they get a super. So it's like I get a super, I'll ski better, right? Yes. But but just like with all the racing <laughs> heritage, exactly. You know, people aren't mm-hmm. aren't necessarily going to to racetracks all the time. Right. And, on track days to take their their nismos out there right but they like the whole idea of associating yeah. themselves yeah. with a racing program absolutely. that has some prominence or some success absolutely and you get that trickle down too so you get like a little taste of it some of the systems that you know your kicks might have might have been developed on a gtr exactly right, right. at the trickle down which i love okay closure what tickled your fancy the most on this score i don't think i have one car in particular but i was so, i was sort of happy to see a lot of the Prominent cars are kind of silver and gray, yeah. which is what cars tend to be, and we end up with a lot of white, black, yeah. silver cars. <laughs> but there's a lot of really good color choice here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a purple Tacoma back there. It's not a factory color, right. but it's still here, and it looks kind of cool. Um, some good greens, really good blues over yeah. in Nissan. And then, um, I don't want to spoil anybody's, but Genesis down there has three crazy orange cars. Yeah. And, um, Concept. Total concepts. Yeah. But yeah. it's them saying, I think, like, hey, we're over here and we have fun. You know, they're trying to change their image There's just a, a little bit green i think it's a gb70 or something you what tickled your fancy um well uh i i also was blown away by the genesis display yeah. not only the concept cars i also i love the color orange on cars i think yeah. it's awesome yep. um but but the the uh, the commitment that hyundai has with genesis is is awesome they're not going away they're not not quitting yeah. it oh, all no. so so i kind of like that but but really on a, on a more practical basis I actually kind of liked the Nissan Kicks. Yes. Got to do a video with Anatoly the Great yep. on this. Yep. It's a little bit bigger. It's getting the Centra's four-cylinder engine, yep. which, which you know, we really like. Which produced pretty good you know, fuel economy yep. numbers and Consumer Reports yep. testing. Uh, it is affordable. Yeah. You know, so kind of goes on that theme, and it's totally front and center at the Nissan display. Yeah. So they're 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 not going all in on on, on trucks. Or big SUVs. I mean, certainly they're they're out there. Yeah. But but the kicks to me is something that's really a, approachable by most people and affordable. And the four all wheel drive. Yes. Uh, yeah. All, all wheel yeah. drive. So, so it's kind of it's kind of transitioning from being kind of a kind of a, a, a not a, SUV. A, well, kind of a, like a, <laughs> like a dorky hatchback to right. now sort of look, looking right. like an SUV and offering all wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. Mine and was yourself. a little more obscure in that I, I think I've shared. My husband had a 1973 Bronco. And there is a new 24 Bronco Heritage version over there that looks so similar. I literally just sent him a picture. He said, please drive that. The, 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 light, the light blue. Yeah, please yeah. drive that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, looks, so, that, looks, yeah. that looks really good. So again, something for absolutely everyone. Racing, nostalgia, off-road, on-road, EVs, traditional pot, gas power trains. Here at the New York Auto Show, of course, anything we've been talking about today Um, consumerreports.org. We do have highlight videos of some of the vehicles we talked about. Next time, keep your questions. Talking cars at iCloud.com. We like being here. Hope you like getting a glimpse and we'll see you next time.